So there are really two parts, I think, to what a smart city is. The first one is what we all tend to think of how technology is embedded into our daily lives and is part of the city. So you think of like parking sensors or smart street lights, um, and that's typically what we think. But I think the, the other part of a smart city is a city that's designed and planned for all people, especially marginalized people who don't necessarily have um, a, a common say in what goes on in their cities. I think one of the quickest things that people will see in the development of smart cities, and it's often seen as the low hanging fruit, is redefining and, and building better transportation systems. So uh, people are becoming more environmentally conscious. Uh, people, more people are living in cities, so that means they're ditching their cars and they're biking to work or they're walking. So Joyride is a hardware and software platform that turns bike fleets into smart bikes. And we help uh, bike sharing operators and governments grow and enhance their service and improve cycling in cities. Joyride's key differentiator is in our hardware. So it's not, so we're not relying on third party apps. We're not relying on cyclists to crowdsource their data. We're integrated with the bike. So we're unobtrusive. Um, the cyclist, it doesn't get in the way of the cyclist and really our platform just works. I think the Joyride fits very well within that future. Bike sharing is already one of the key initiatives that cities are offering their citizens in order to move towards a future of sustainable transport. Um, and in order for cities and citizens to really receive the full benefits and potential of these kind of initiatives, they're going to need the sort of bike tracking data that uh, technologies like uh, Joyride can offer. I think one of these is, is a natural conservatism um, and a tendency to stick with old solutions. Uh, another serious hurdle is the brevity of political terms, uh, meaning that the, the, the governments and councils who are in positions to really accelerate the growth of smart cities um, are, are concerned that these initiatives won't bear fruit within their terms. So people are becoming a lot more multimodal in their thinking of transportation. And it's not just about using all of these different modes of transportation, but it's having one seamless platform that includes all of these modes. So someone can take car sharing, someone can take bike sharing, they can take the bus, they can take the train, but it's not, they don't need two or three different transit passes to do it. They can all do it within one app because it's all integrated together. In order for a city to be truly smart, we need to really connect everything. So that's millions of people, objects, devices. And I'm not just talking about uh, objects with, with mechanics inside them. It could be something as simple as the orange in your fruit bowl, uh, down to street furniture. So in order for this to happen, and the really billions of objects to be connected, I think we're looking at, at quite a long time. However, that said, I think within the next 10 years or so, we should be somewhere between somewhere around halfway between where we are now and achieving a truly smart connected city.